is Gary Icahn. I'm the executive director of Filmscape Chicago, and I'm here today with Colette Gabriel, the general manager of Keslo Camera Chicago, but also a director at Filmscape. And today we're going to talk about all the things that Filmscape is going to bring to the Chicago area June 25th and 26th. Colette, tell us some of the things you're looking forward to in the Filmscape universe. Well, Filmscape is entirely free, <laughs> which is amazing. So that's one thing that uh, is great about it. So if anybody is interested in learning anything about the filmmaking process, or maybe they've been in the industry for 30 years and they just want to hone their skills, it's a great place to come and learn those things. Well, and that brings up a good point. Filmscape is all about education. We're here to teach and educate the film community, both working professionals and those growing up in the field and wanting to learn more about film, about film and television technology in general. We're here at Can TV today just to try and explain some of the things and talk about what Filmscape is to us and what it might be to you in the future. Let's just cover some of the things that are in Filmscape, Colette. You, you, you're a professional in the industry. You work in the rental house as a general manager. Um, and, and building the community for film and television in, in the Chicago metro area is very, very important mm -hmm. because we need professional crews. We need quality talent. And we need the people that are in the society here in Chicago to join us as part of the film community. What are some of the things that you've seen in the schedule for Filmscape that makes it bring up highlights for you? Um, there are so many. I mean, it, it, and no matter what field you're interested in, there's something there for you. Um, you can learn about uh, special effects makeup. Um, you can learn about the legal side of things, making sure that if you are going to go out and, and make a film, that you're doing everything properly, you're not going to get in trouble legally with it, you're ensuring your production, all of those things. Sounds really boring, but it's actually been our most popular class in the and, last few years. And, and it's funny how people think about, well, what do I need to know about legal aspects of, of filmmaking? But there's a lot that's involved in that. Mm -hmm. How do you read contracts? How do you understand the documents that you're working in? How do you secure access? Um, how, even how you gain funding is all d dedicated in how we work in contracts. So that's a really important part. Yeah. The, and makeup? It, you know, special effects and visual effects makeup. I also hear there's a mold making and resin class to be able yeah. to do mold making and learn a, a task that can be used for props and other things. Not specifically for the film industry, but more as, as for artists in general. There's mm -hmm. a, a two hour long session, hands on session to do this. And I think those are the kind of things that are really interesting from Filmscape's point of view to actually build the community. Yeah, I, I talk to um, film students at various film colleges here in Chicago and tell them now you can stay here and you can be a part of the community here. When I graduated, there wasn't a lot going on. There was still some commercial production as there always is and, and documentary production has always been strong here, but I wanted to get into narrative features and television. And so I went to Los Angeles because that was one of the big <laughs> markets that you go to. But now I came back and the industry every year is just growing and growing and growing. And now I think we're even gonna see more growth with the um, advancement of our tax incentives. So Illinois has tax incentives to help bring people here to film their production, to help make it financially available for them. Um, you know, there are certain productions that uh, will film in a certain part of the country or in Canada because they just get more incentives and then overall they can keep their costs down. Um, but here in Chicago, we've, we've had a strong incentive and we've just built it up even more. So the new incentives year. go in effect on July 1st. Yes, so, yes. And that's a big deal because it's, it's, it's increases for deductions for people above the line and <laughs> below the line. It's tax incentives for the productions and the things around the productions. Because a lot of people don't realize all of the technical aspects and job positions that are available outside of film production. I mean, everybody knows about the cinematographer and the mm -hmm. actors and the director, sure. but they don't think about catering. They don't think about mm -hmm. hair and makeup. They don't think about you know electrical service and grip, uh, the teamsters that move everybody around in a production, and literally hundreds of people yeah. that work in and around television production. And then beyond that, when you have a film here, you're bringing in a lot of people from outside of, uh, of Chicago or Illinois, um, but a lot of people are local. 
But those people coming in from outside are staying in hotels. They're going to restaurants. They're, you know, it's, it's almost like tourism budget, right? You know, we're seeing the influx of that. So that just helps build up all these other businesses around the city and around Illinois because people are filming outside of Chicago too. Well, and that's a, that's a good point to make is that this is not just Chicago we're talking mm -hmm. about. We're talking about filming all around the Midwest. It's not just, while we're centric to Chicago and we live here because mm -hmm. we love it, we also know that filming goes, you know, there's still you know, the prison in Joliet's been a popular yeah. place since the Blues Brothers. There's been a lot of movies shot there and other features, Public Enemies. I mean, there's a number of films that have been shot mm -hmm. in Chicago that have used the Joliet prison as, yeah. as a backdrop. But there's all kinds of other things. There's landscapes and environments and everything as far south as, as you know, Tennessee and, and as far west as o o Iowa. We're going to have people working in regular, regularly in the Chicago metro area from yeah. all around the country. You bring up an interesting aspect of it, though, is that how many, uh, of, how much of the talent really does come from out, out, out of the metro area? Um, I don't have the percentages on that, but I do know that I, the majority of people on set are from here. They live here. Some of them maybe um, started out living in another market, but as the industry has grown here, they've established themselves here, so they live here permanently. So well, a lot of the workers yeah. on set, where you might have the director and some of the producers and some of the key people and actors coming from other markets, there are a fair amount of people that are working on these sets that are local. Let's, talk, let's name some of the productions that have been in Chicago. I mean, we all know the Dick Wolf show, Chicago Fire, yeah. Chicago PD, Chicago Med. There's Power, there's mm -hmm. uh, Shameless. I mean, Fargo. Fargo. Uh, a lot of people don't even know that Fargo shot their whole last season in Illinois. And that's, that's actually a perfect example of using the entire state. Right. Um, because they, their uh, timeline was, uh, what was it, 1950s? 1940s and 1940s, 50s. 1940s. Yeah. 50s. And uh, so they went to, uh, you know, old small towns and they could easily recreate that and make it look like it was 60, 70 years ago. Um, and and that's, the, that's the power and influence of all of this. Mm -hmm. And there's so much going on in Chicago right now. I, I mean, Chicago has become one of those focal points for new technologies and virtual production. We've got yeah. you know, three virtual production stages up here. Resolution Digital has one. Uh, Smash Studios is finishing theirs right now. Uh, the DePaul campus just put mm -hmm. in one for training. So there's a lot in this new technology that marries the gaming world with cinematic feature filmmaking. Yeah. And it's it's a brave new technology for us to play with, and Chicago's really on the forefront on it. And a lot of people don't realize that in this aspect of it. And that's actually one of the things at Filmscape that's going to be really big. We're going to actually yes. have two separate virtual production stages up and doing demonstrations during the show. Yeah. So people can see this cutting edge level of technology that's available to Chicago filmmakers. Yeah, and you're more versed on explaining what that is. You know, I usually tell people, hey, have you seen The Mandalorian or shows like that? where they create this virtual world that's projected, but please explain to people what exactly that is. Literally what we're talking about here is, is having a film set built with a large LED, um, they call it a volume, but it's really just a large panel of LED um, that show video on them. So think about you're standing in front of a large television set, m large television display, much like you would be as a newscaster or a weather person or something like that. But instead of having it projected in green, you're actually getting live interactive um, developments being driven by a computer that's reading the tracking information, the position information of the camera, and relating that to the background so the background actually moves mm -hmm. in relationship to the actors and everything else. They've used it for tech shows like The Batman, yep. um, Star Trek Discovery, basically any visual effects show. But a lot of television shows are now using it for what they call process work, which is the, mm -hmm. the pulling around, shooting people in vehicles. It's a, yeah. really, it's a complicated task. And we do a lot of it here in Chicago um, on a process trailer where you're literally towing a vehicle around and you're shooting the actors talking in there. Now we can take that inside and do it on a stage where it's very, very simple and easy. And it means that we can become, start working year round yeah. doing different kinds of technology here in Chicago. Yeah, and we, that's an advantage for us. Absolutely. I mean, we certainly have year-round production here. If anybody watches uh, any of the Chicago shows, you'll see that there's plenty of snow and weather in those shows. Um, but it can be difficult working in those extreme environments. Um, so not everybody comes here. Sometimes they push their production and wait till spring and summer to, to shoot here. Um, so this is just an opportunity to be able to do that. And you were showing me a demonstration um, of one of these setups and just talking about how they could get, you know, an actor who was in England um, 
doing something, they could set it up there and not have to have them travel, which was important during COVID when you couldn't travel so much, you know, so they could film part of it there and part of it here and still have the same background and seem like they're in the same room. And and it's solved uh, issues with, you know, scheduling for different actors. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have, where you can go stand in front of an LED wall, you know, a large television set and have the background projected behind you while you work, it means a faster turnaround, it means things. But it also changes everything because it, you know, there's rules restrictions. Children can only be on set for six hours. If you have children on a location, that's only four hours a day. And all of a sudden you can have a full day. You can have a sunrise or sunset last an entire crew day. Um, There's a lot of reasons why to have this new level of virtual production, but really what it is, is it's gonna marry the, the world of gaming to the world of film production. And it's going to expand and enlarge the crews and give a lot more um, capabilities for a number of different new positions that aren't really established yet in filmmaking and television and in film in yeah. film production. And it's important for everyone to think about those kinds of things. It's not just, you know, it's not just the big four or five jobs. It's it's electricians and gaffers and, and crew people and, and stylists and prop people and art directors and, you know, construction people and electricians. Mm-hmm. And there's hundreds and hundreds of people that work in a regular crew that a lot of people never think about. Yeah, that's and that's true. what Filmscape's here to train on. Yeah, so take us through a day of Filmscape, right? Filmscape is two, is two days long. Uh, take us through what, <clears throat> what that day entails. Well, it, it starts relatively early in the morning. Um, the crew starts showing up at 8 o'clock to set up, and, and we're really trying to, to make the environment positive for everyone. We have a number of vendors coming in, companies like big-name companies like Aerie, mm-hmm. Barbizon, um, Tesla's going to be there, Doffenbach Rental House is going to be there, Doffenbach Zeiss Camera's going lenses. to be there, Camera Amba- Ambassador's going to be there. There's going to be cameras and lenses and lighting, all there for people to see. And then starting about 10 o'clock, we'll start doing class sessions. And the class sessions are about an hour long, first come, first serve basis. We're not doing tickets or anything this year. We're just gonna say, line up and get in. <clears throat> and, and then we'll have sessions every hour to every 90 minutes or so, the sessions will change out and we'll have different speakers. Um, some of the people that are coming in to talk as Art Adams is coming in to talk about optics from Aerie. Uh, Snehal Patel, a Chicagoan, who mm-hmm. grew up and went to school here. Um, you know, coming in to talk about optics and lensing. So we have Aerie and Zeiss and other companies that are going to show us some of the things that are involved in modern filmmaking and explain it to everyone. It's not just for the people that work in film and television production. It's for everyone that works in, in any kind of production environment for media and entertainment. That's what Filmscape is for. And another aspect of that, too, is it's a, it's a place to mingle, right? It's a place to network. That's a lot of what this industry is about, is networking. That's how you get jobs, uh, getting to know people and learning more and finding out op- other opportunities beyond Filmscape of how you can learn more. And so we will have kind of some structured sessions where people can uh, mingle. Maybe uh, there'll be a topic to discuss or, or a certain area um, of expertise that will be <coughs> mingling together, have a little coffee breaks. Um, and then also uh, have a little fun on lunch break too. Uh, we do a thing called Grip Olympics and then another one called Camera Olympics. Um, and we have people um, in those fields doing basically obstacle courses with the gear. So uh, it's a lot of fun to, to I'm waiting for the, going. I'm waiting for the steady cam Olympics when they have to do it with 100 <laughs> pounds of gear strapped on their chest. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> tough. But, but, but those are the fun things we do. You know, it's, yeah. it's showing to people how to wrap cables. It's how fast can you wrap a cable? How yeah. fast can you do some of the crazy things that we have to do in business? Right. And, and everybody thinks, well, well, that's kind of stupid, but it's like you're at the end of the day and the weather's coming, you want to hurry. Yeah. You, you have to <laughs> learn how to work very quickly and very efficiently. Mm-hmm. And that's actually one of the the things these Olympic tests actually do is sure. it actually helps people get to that stage. And, and that's another aspect of, of Filmscape. It's all about empowering the community. Mm-hmm. One of the things that's new this year is the empowerment stage. We're yes. having a stage set up that's actually on the show floor at Cine City. Our sponsor this year is putting it up. We're all indoors, all inside in the last weekend in June. But, but we're put, putting up a stage because we want to talk about empowering people in the community. We want to make sure that Everyone knows that in Chicago, we really believe that the community at large is where we want to have our investment in. It's not just in individual people. It's in groups of people that can help bring up our community to each other and work in a way that is much, much more efficient for us in general. It's empowering women and people of color and and no matter what your sexual orientation, the film community is available for you because we're a very, very welcoming city. 
Um, you know, we, we like to talk, last year you had a discussion with Lily Wachowski mm -hmm. uh, of the famous Wachowskis. They were working on a show up in Andersonville called Work in Progress. It yeah. was very much, it was a story about a queer individual and how they, they built their own community and had their own community. But what people don't realize is that the Wachowskis actually, Lily actually built a community around her that was like she wanted to, the show to be. And it really showed the empowerment of the city and the power that we have in uniting all aspects of our community into filmmaking. Yeah, and uh, I feel like it's happened organically in Chicago. Some, you know, we all just know that it's important to have diversity on set and, and be around the people that we're comfortable being around and also, you know, that represent the stories that are being told. And, but on top of that, there are actual laws um, that are pushing these incentives for diversity. So part of the tax incentive, too, is really making sure that every production is doing the best they can to hire a diverse crew and work with diverse companies. And that's really important to make sure this growth continues in that manner. But like you've said, it's just it's been so organic in Chicago you know, I see so many women working in camera department where when I went to film school, I'd be one of two, maybe, women in every cinematography class I had. And I started in Los Angeles on set. And yeah, it was it was rare that there were many other women in the camera department or, you know, the grip or electric departments. Um, but now I've seen more and more women, more and more people of color. I, you, you name it. It's it feels very comfortable because it feels like reality, it's not well, just a white man's business anymore. It's, and, it's and everybody's. It's, and, it, and it shouldn't be. I would like to point out that Colette is one of the three um, women in the city that run rental houses in Chicago. The three major rental houses in Chicago, or three of the five major mm -hmm. rental houses in Chicago, Tesla Camera, Panavision, and Camera Ambassador, all have women that run them. And I think that's an amazing thing because, as far as I understand, this is the only city in the ci city in the country that actually has three women running three mm -hmm. of the top five rental houses. Um, that's kind of impressive when you think about it. And we're actually going to do a panel on that too. Yeah. Like yeah. We, haven't, we haven't told Erica yet. She's gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> sure we're gonna, she's we're gonna drag her into it. But one of the things we want to do is show people that actually women are empowered here in the city mm -hmm. and, and people of color are empowered here in the city and it, in a way that they aren't in other locations. So there's movement. If you don't think you fit in in the normal Hollywood setup, maybe you think about Chicago to come and build yeah. your career here because it's really important for our community to bring in people that don't necessarily look like us. We want the community to be broader and, and, and wiser and much more efficient. But that that connection that we have to each other is because we have done this organically and we do believe that that's the way we should go. And that's what Filmscape's about too, is educating organically to bring people up and build our community to make mm -hmm. it better. Yeah, and we're just one uh, opportunity in the city of Chicago um, for this kind of learning. So we understand that not everybody can go to film school. It it's, costs a lot of money. Um, it might not fit in with your schedule if you're having to work or, or take care of family as you're trying to learn. So this is one place where you can learn for free. Um, there are other opportunities that exist like this. Industry Days at Chicago International Film Festival uh, is a fantastic way to learn more and really get close um, conversations with professionals that come from all over. Um, and then there are other opportunities too. There are programs like Free Spirit Media, um, there's Cinecares, which is the nonprofit um, organization that's affiliated with uh, Cinespace Film Studios. So a lot of those programs are working to try to give opportunities to people who never really thought that they had an opportunity to get into this industry. Well, NIFA, IFA, and, and I don't know, yeah. you could call it both things. It's the Illinois Film Alliance or it's the Independent Film Alliance. Yes. But it's it's based in the old Able Cine Space in, yes. uh, at, at Cinespace, where we're now trying to build a much broader space for people to have co-located working and mm -hmm. community where they can share and be safe and everything else. And that's important also, is to build the community around those making films and mm -hmm. television. I mean, and we have some pretty famous filmmakers. I mean, Kartemkin is here and there's some yeah. other things that are here. It's like people forget how much actual filmmaking is done in Chicago. Yeah. So one of the questions that always comes up are, what are some of the crew things that we get into? <laughs> I'm gonna ask you and you're gonna ask me and we'll, we'll play a game here. Um, so actually, you get to go first. And, and what's one of the crew, crew positions that you think people don't know enough about? Uh, well, what is the difference between a gaffer and a key grip? Oh, that's a good one. 
Well, a gaffer's the person that sets the lighting and, and does all that, but the key grip is actually the person that hangs all the lights. And, it's a, and, it, and people don't think about it that way, is, is that there's somebody for every kind of job in mm -hmm. filmmaking. And, and the gaffer is always going to determine what the lighting looks like. He works with the cinematographer and they work out the mechanics of it. And the key grip is always the first person he goes to to make sure that the lights are put where he wants. Mm -hmm. And also to shape that lighting too. Oh. So uh, set and up a flag to make sure the lighting isn't just going everywhere. It's, it's directed into a certain spot. Which, which becomes a bigger deal when we start talking about the aspect of virtual production because mm -hmm. when you're working against an LED volume and you've got a large light source behind you, you can't have any light fall on that because it would ca cause errors yeah. in it. And it's those things of taking individual tasks and jobs and making them somewhere else. So what's a best boy do? <laughs> That's always a fun one, right? I always uh, hear that when people watch the uh, end credits uh, at the end of a movie and they're like, what is a best boy? <laughs> so a best boy is, is uh, you know, there's a best boy electric and there's a best boy grip. So you have the gaffer would be the head of the electrical department. And then that person has a best boy doesn't mean it's a man. Uh, that is just a, a term that maybe will change uh, one of these days. But uh, it's the person that's ordering the supplies, um, ordering all the gear they need if they need extra gear, kind of running the shop for them. And so the same thing is you'll have the key grip and then you'll have a best boy underneath that that's sort of running the department. See, it's interesting because people don't think about all those aspects and they don't think mm -hmm. about what you mean somebody has to order supplies. Yeah. And it's like, well, there's a lot of expendables in film and television. You're constantly going through everything from tape to, you know, magic markers. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> there's always some kind of need. So I have one for you. What is what does a first assistant director do? Are they assisting the director? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> it depends on what kind of production. I mean, I've seen them do a little more than carry coffee. But mm -hmm. the reality of it is the first assistant directors are actually usually driving the production on a daily basis, making sure that the timing is accurate, making sure that the shots are set up in order, making sure that all of that content is, is, is ready to go when the director is ready to shoot and the actors are ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's like any other good assistant. An assistant is a term that's used a lot in film and television. And it really means the second number two person and number three person. Yeah. Much like what does a first assistant do in a camera truck? Yeah. You know, and people don't think about the fact that the first assistant really only pulls focus mm -hmm. and controls the truck and everything else. They don't think about those kinds of things. Yeah. I, when I tell people there is someone in charge of just making sure everything's in focus, a lot of times they're surprised. They're used to just their, you know, their point and shoot camera and it does autofocus. But... In cinema, we still like to manipulate everything, be in control of everything, so we can really change the feel and look. So you don't always want everything in focus. So you want to, uh, you know, pinpoint the focus just on someone's face, where everything behind them is is out of focus. But that not, might not be the center of the frame. Where if you were with your point and shoot, a lot of times it kind of just picks the center and focuses that. So you're really manipulating the image in so many ways. That's what everybody's doing. The gaffer's doing. All, everybody on there is really well, even the camera operator the because a lot of people don't yeah. assume that the director of photography is actually taking the pictures and right. in most instances they're not there's somebody actually there to operate the camera for them yeah and uh, and according to union rules in the United States they have to have an operator who's separate from the cinematographer oh so yeah all things that are new <laughs> the rules constantly change and we love it for that yeah yeah um, you know let's talk about UPMs. Oh. There's, there's another position that people don't know anything of, and it's a general generic term, unit production yeah. manager. Um, they're just kind of the bosses, aren't they? They, they yeah. kind of direct everybody around. They're, you know, they're... I like to say it's the project manager, you know, yeah. to sort of relate it to any other field. Um, also, they're in charge of the money. So they're the one that's really making the deals with all of the different rental houses that are renting all the gear to, uh, to the show. Um, they're making deals with the crew too on how much they get paid. At really, they're in control of the finances, making sure that everything stays on budget and then just everything's kind of running well. Well, and they also take care of human relations, HR, yeah, yeah. Uh, politics, <laughs> the legal stuff, everything else that falls in that. And, and it's interesting because people don't think about those kinds of aspects and, and that, you know, there's a production accountants, there's pr mm -hmm. production secretaries, there's, you know, there's stenographers and other people. I mean, it's amazing the number of kind, I say a stenographer, I mean somebody who actually keeps the records in yeah. general. Um, a rather old term I used just to <laughs> date myself. 
Well, but it's interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that's important to think about. You know, you might be interested in filmmaking just as an idea, but have no idea what you would do in it. And maybe you are interested in accounting or you're interested in, uh, you know, in costumes and, and, and fashion. Well, you can do any of that on a film set. So pretty much every job, you can find a way to incorporate it in the film world too. So if you want to just, you know, combine your passion of movies and, you know, kind of a real job, uh, you know, something that you're going to study in school, there's usually a way to do it, which is great. And Filmscape is a place to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to listen to us chat about Filmscape Chicago. We hope to see you there June 25th and 26th at Cine City. Our website is filmscapechicago.com. You can register there. And again, everything is free. Thanks.